Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. How are we today? We thank God for life. The Bible says he's the fountain of life, so we'll give him all the glory. If you're watching from, if you're in your house now, watching this morning and those in the building, we just want to say good morning to Jesus. If he indeed he has woken you up, he has woke you up this morning, just begin to say, Father, good morning. Just begin to say, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name. Father, we just want to say thank you for a wonderful privilege and honor to be in your presence this morning. It is indeed because you reign, because you live, that's why we're able to say this day. You made everything beautiful at your own time. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for another privilege to wake up this morning to see another preserve your seed. The fourth preserve your seed of the year. Father, we give you all the glory. Our kinsman, Redeemer, we bless your name. We put our trust in the shadow of your wings. And we say, have your way this morning in the name of Jesus. As we've come to pray for the principal thing, which is wisdom in the life of our children. The children born and the children unborn. Father, we say, have your way in their lives in the name of Jesus. These are generations that will represent you in years to come. Father, keep them in the hollow of your hands. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, have your way. All the coverage, the internet coverage is in your hands, Lord. Everyone that will watch this program, those that are watching now, and those that will watch in years to come, and in your hands, Lord. For every prayer that we prayed on this morning, Lord, it will never be a wasted one. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Please join me and welcome the living voices. Amen. Amen. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. There is none like him. Go ahead and worship the one who is the almighty God, the king of glory, the I am that I am. The one who was and is and is to come. The preserver of our seeds, the full one, the righteous one, the I am that I am. Lift up your hands. Let the seeds of worship flow from your lips this morning to our loving Father, to the King of glory, to the keeper of our soul. Lord, we bow to you this morning in worship. There is none like you. There is none to be compared to you. You reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything written about you is great. We come in humility this morning just again to bow in worship to express our love for who you are and who you always be to us, oh God. Daily as I live, often as I breathe, let my whole life be an expression of your grace. Daily as I live and often as I breathe, let my whole life be an expression of your grace. So this morning we cry up the Father, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Oh, we cry of the Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Oh, we cry of the Father. Hallowed be your name hallowed be your name hallowed be your name daily as I live orphan as I breathe let my whole life be an expression of your grace daily as I live 
giving nothing as I breathe. Let my whole life be an expression of your grace. We cry up and Father, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Oh, we cry up and Father, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. One more time we cry, Abba Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Oh, our Father who art in heaven. Amen. Hallow be your name. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven. Amen. Hallow be your name. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven. Amen. Hallowed be your name. 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 Hallowed be your name, Lord be your name. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. Lord be your name. For you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift a voice in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift a voice in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Lord, you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. So great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Sing it with me, he's great, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. 
you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing ye only because you may you move the mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible lord we stand in ye only because you made a way yes we stand in ye only because you made yes we stand in ye only because you made a way with your hands lifted up say this song after me lord prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanks given, I'll be a living testimony. For you. Yes, Lord. Father, we say thank you. thank you. And that's our heart's desire. We need you to use us for your glory. We want to be a living sacrifice. We want to be used of you. We want to be vessels unto honor. We want to be useful tools in your hands. Lord, if you're looking for somebody to use in this day and age, that our children will be available, that even as parents we make ourselves available. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for, faith, for your faithfulness towards us. Thank you for your goodness, and we give you all the glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Master Jesus. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Why not turn to your neighbor and say good morning? How are you? Today is the 21st day of the month of April. And 21 is very significant. When a child hits 21, we expect a lot of things to happen. At 21, the child should have graduated. The child should, have, should be engaged. We're planning to get married. You know, a lot of things. And 21 in the Bible as well, we are told that when Daniel prayed for 21 days, there was no answer to his prayers. But on the 21st day, there was a divine intervention. And I pray today to everybody, everybody watching, everybody in-house and everybody online, that the same way God sent an angel, God sent angel Michael to wrestle with the prince of Persia so that Daniel will receive the answers to his prayers. I pray that every form of delay, let it come to an end today in Jesus' name. On this 21st day of the month of April, that which has been stopping you, that which has been delayed, that which has been hijacked, that which has been intercepted, that which has been distracted, that which has been hidden, today let a breakthrough, a mighty breakthrough, you would experience it in Jesus' name. I pray today that mountains standing against you shall be uprooted. I say valleys opposing you shall be exalted. I say your crooked ways shall be made straight and your rough places shall be made plain in Jesus' mighty name. On the 21st day, 
Daniel received the answers to his prayers. Receive your breakthroughs. Receive your answers. Receive your heart's desires in the name of Jesus. Let the spiritual realm shift today. Let the angel Michael that wrestled with the prince of Persia arise on your behalf and wrestle for us in Jesus' mighty name. We need divine reinforcement. Daniel needed it. We receive it today. Divine ability, divine assistance on this 21st day of the month of April in Jesus' name. Over your children, over our children, all that we have been praying for, the academic breakthrough, their financial breakthrough, their every form of breakthrough that we are trusting God for, for the lives of our children. Is it sickness? Is it one form of delay or the other? Is it in their studies? They keep on changing courses. Today it's economics. Tomorrow it's history. Another day it's fashion. Uh, Another day is sports. We pray today. Let every form of distraction, every form of disorderliness, let it come to an end today. Amen. Let the breakthrough be permanent. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Good morning, parents. And good morning, parents-to-be. Good morning, guardians. We give God all the praises. That we are still parents, we say thank you to God. And that we are about to become parents, we give him all the glory. For he is the one that gives the gift of parenthood. And we say, Father... The children that you have given unto us, they will continue to be signs and wonders in their generation in Jesus' name. For what you did last month, what you did in January, in February, in March, what you're going to do in May, the end of the year, we give you, in, we give you praises in arrears and in advance. So can we put our hands together for the Lord and say, God, I thank you. I'm so grateful. I'm a grateful parent. I'm a hopeful parent. I'm a parent who knows that you are the parents of all parents. Receive all the honor. Amen. So this morning, we're going to pray for our children. And we're going to pray for wisdom. Wisdom. We need wisdom more than anything else. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Father, we say thank you. We give you all the glory. Can we begin to pray for ourselves first? As parents, before we begin to make this decrease, can we anoint our tongues? Can we ask God for forgiveness? In any way that we may have sinned against God, let's ask God to forgive us. Have we said negative things this morning? Have we entertained negative thoughts? Are we operating under the spirit of fear? Can we begin to pray today that as I make these declarations over my children, nothing will stop me. The spirit of, the spirit of fear will not stop me. The spirit of unbelief will not stop me. In any way that we may have sinned against God, can we begin to ask God for forgiveness? My lips are anointed. Anoint your lips today. Anoint your heart. Anoint your mouth. That today as I declare, I will speak as a kingdom authoritarian. Whatever it is I decree shall be established. I speak as a parent. I have authority before God. I have authority over my children. I have authority over the atmosphere. For the words we speak, their spirit and their life. We shall decree a thing and it shall be established. This morning I will ask and I shall receive. I will seek and I shall find. I shall knock on the door and it shall be opened unto me. Sin will not stop me. Sin will not delay me. Sin will not debar me. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. As I go into the territory of the unknown. As I go into the spiritual realm. As I stand as God's oracle, as I stand to speak on behalf of God, I decree and I declare, I pronounce and I announce that nothing will stop me. Nothing will stand against me. No accusation finger of the, of the enemy will oppose me in Jesus' name. The Bible says that the prince of this world came and he found nothing in him. By the grace of God and by the mercies of God, nothing will be held against me. As I decree over my children in Buku Ife, Anu, Daniel, as I make these prophetic declarations over them, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the power of the anointing. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for the power that I have with you. Begin to thank God for the power that you have with him. We have power with God. We have authority with God. You are God's extended mouth. You are God's oracle. You are God's mouthpiece. As you decree today, so shall it be. The heavens shall hear. Our voices shall be heard on high. And there will be a, a permanent performance in Jesus' name. There shall be a physical manifestation of God's spoken words in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. 
In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Now, wisdom. What does the Bible say about wisdom? A lot of things. And we cannot exhaust it today. So that's why we're going to have part two next month on wisdom. So it says in Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7, wisdom is a principal thing. It is the main thing, the ultimate thing. We all need wisdom. Our children need wisdom to study, how to study, when to study, where to study. Wisdom in choosing friends. And next month, by the grace of God, we're going to go into other things which Dick and Bimbo will mention later when it comes up to round up about, you know, wisdom to deal with an angry person. Wisdom to deal with a flatterer. Wisdom to deal with a gaslighter. That's for next month. So, and next month, I want our children to be awake. So please get the, give them enough notice. I want them to wake up and pray with us as parents. So as these prayer points are going out, they are saying amen. Wisdom to deal with the flex. Wisdom to deal with a thief. Wisdom to deal with a drug dealer. So we need A to Z for next month. Wisdom to deal with these different people that they are going to meet in the journey of life. Praise the Lord. Now back to today. Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. Now, what is wisdom? Somebody will say wisdom is common sense, but common sense is not common. According to the dictionary, wisdom is simply the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So, when you have experience and you have the knowledge, and you apply it, you apply good judgment, that is wisdom. We need to understand that there must be the application of it. A lot of us are the custodian of knowledge, but we don't apply it. A lot of people have plenty, a lot of knowledge. They have the information from social media, from the library, from wherever, but they don't apply it. The application of experience, the application of the knowledge we have, the application of good judgments, all amounts to wisdom. Now, wisdom transforms, but knowledge informs. We need to understand the difference. Knowledge simply informs. But when you apply the knowledge, when you understand the knowledge you possess, and you apply it, your life becomes transformed and you have simply operated in wisdom. So our children, can we take this first prayer point? That in the name of Jesus, concerning our children, they will understand wisdom as the principal thing. Above their trainers, above their friends, above social media, that wisdom will be embraced by our children. That they will put it in a proper setting. They will put wisdom in a proper perspective. They will understand wisdom to be the principal thing. It is the principal thing above their reputation, above anything. Wisdom is a principal thing. Can we begin to pray today? My children will embrace wisdom as a principal thing. The far most thing, the ultimate, the most important, the most urgent tool to be possessed in the name of Jesus. They will place a high premium on wisdom. They will embrace wisdom. They will seek after wisdom. They will desire wisdom. They will replace foolishness with wisdom. They will replace silliness with wisdom. They will replace stupidity with wisdom. They will replace ignorance with wisdom. They will not be naive. They will have wisdom in the name of Jesus. Wisdom to speak. Wisdom to do things. Wisdom to dress. Wisdom to study. Wisdom to speak. They will apply wisdom that they will understand the importance of wisdom in the journey of life in Jesus mighty name that they will not get to their later years at the age of 40 and suddenly understand what wisdom is about in these 10 years that they've entered into they will understand wisdom as a teenager as a toddler as a young boy as a young girl our children in uni our children in secondary school, they'll understand wisdom. They will see it as the principal thing, more than their necessary food, more than their, more than their hobbies. 
Wisdom will be number one key on their list. In the order of priority, that wisdom will top the list in the name of Jesus. Our children shall be wise. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Let's look at some people in the Bible. We're going to apply the, the wisdom they applied. Let's look at First Samuel chapter 18. First Samuel chapter 18. And this is mentioned three times in this short, in this chapter. So can we open our Bibles, please? The book of First Samuel chapter 18. We're going to look at verse 5. Verse 5 first. Now this was the case of David. We know what David went through with Saul. How that he wanted to kill him over Saul. So because of this, he was jealous. He was envious of the accolades he was receiving from the people. And he just wanted to get him killed. Saul was also a man who had a mental problem. So the, the, good, the God David, and David would go to his house and play the harp just so that his madness, his mental disease would subside. But he was doing good to him, but Saul had an ulterior motive. And David knew that Saul wanted to get him killed. He knew that he was against him. He knew that he was jealous of him. But at the same time, he knew that he was in the palace for a reason. He understood the purpose for which he was in the palace. And he was focused to that purpose. That's wisdom. When you know what your focus is. When you know what your purpose is in life. You don't jump to every battle. There are some things you ignore. You just look away and pretend not to have seen them. Because your eyes are on the target that you have set. And you want to achieve your goals. And this is wisdom. So let's look at the life of, um, life of David. It says there. You can read the whole chapter later to understand and appreciate this chapter. In verse 5, And David went out with a soul Saul said, And he said, Say to yourself, My children shall behave themselves wisely. Wherever they find themselves, whether it's in school, or as I was wisely. There is a behavior that is wise. Begin to pray. There is a certain behavior that is foolish. A certain behavior that is dangerous. And there is a behavior that is wise. Begin to pray for your children. That wherever they find themselves. The Bible says that wherever David went to. He behaved himself wisely. He knew how to comport himself. He knew how to hold himself together. He knew what to say. He knew when not to speak. He knew when to be silent. He knew when to, when, to be, when to discuss. He knew when to nod his head. He behaved himself wisely. Begin to pray. Daniel, in the name of Jesus, all the days of your lives, you know how to behave yourself wisely. That wise behavior, that wise decorum, that wise attitude, that wise presentation, I release unto you in Jesus' name. When you go for a job interview, you know how to behave yourself wisely. When you're in the midst of wicked people, you know how to behave yourself wisely. When you're in the, in the midst of people who are going off wisely, at unit, when your roommates are lazy students you know how to behave yourself by the grace of god our children shall behave themselves wisely god give them godly wisdom give them divine wisdom give them spiritual wisdom give them insights father we say thank you in jesus name have we prayed amen it goes on to say because he behaved himself wisely guess what happened and saul set him over the men of war and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants all around. David was just exceptional. Why? Did he bribe? No, of course not. What did he know who to say good morning to? He knew when to curtsy. He knew when to be quiet. He, knew, he, knew, he just knew how to behave himself because God was with him and he was rewarded. 
when you behave yourself wisely, you get rewarded. When children behave themselves, they get rewarded by their teachers. If they're looking somebody to take new students round, they say, you know what, you have behaved yourself wisely. You know, can can you be one of the students? Can they make them make him a prefect? Can you be one of the students that will take the new students around the campus, show them the library, show them the school hall, show them things? Because the teachers trust them. That's an that's a responsibility that has been placed on them because they have behaved themselves wisely. Can we begin to pray right now? That it says so set him over all the men of war. They were he was still he was not forty two years old. He only became the king at the age of 30. He was still in his teens years. And the king of Israel, King Saul, deemed it fit to place him over the men of war. And he found favor before the people and in the sights of the Saul's servant. So which means that he was humble. He was not arrogant. Because they could have said, who is this young chap that just came and they, they, they placed him over us? But in the eyes of the people and in the eyes of the servants, he found favor. Can we begin to pray? Our children will be rewarded. They will behave themselves wisely and a reward will come. They will not serve in vain. They will not behave themselves wisely in vain. The good that they are doing shall be rewarded. How they are carrying themselves shall be acknowledged. How they are carrying themselves shall be noticed. Begin to pray today. Our children, as they continue in the community, as they go to work, as they go to school, as they go to uni, whatever it is that they are doing, wherever they find themselves, they will conduct themselves with wisdom. The grace of God will rest upon them. The Holy Spirit will minister to them. Our children are for signs and for wonders. They are for good signs and they are for good wonders in the name of Jesus. Make sure you are praying for your children. I pray for my children today that wherever you find yourself, with what you do and with what you say by the grace of God you'll be promoted divine promotion divine settlement divine grace shall lift you up in the name of Jesus you you'll be the head and not the tail you'll be above and not beneath by the grace of God thank you father in Jesus name have we prayed you know many times as Christians we love the promises of God we like to quote the promises, but we don't pay attention to the conditions. Now, God is not a magician. God is a miracle-working God. And life is not just based on miracles. Anybody who says, I want to live my life, I want to be, be receiving miracles on a daily basis. Oh, God, bring me food to eat like you gave um, Elijah food. You sent a raven to give him food. I'm going to sit in my house. I'm not going to go and job, uh, job hunt and the job will come. Money will just drop from heaven. That person is a dream land. That person is living in a dream land. Sometimes God will release miracles and sometimes God wants us to perform. There's a role God wants us to play. Now, we always say, make my children the head and not the tail. They shall be above and not beneath. For that happen for our children to be above then they must do something what must they do there was somebody that was leading the men of war but when david you know, presented himself in a wise way he was promoted so the condition he fulfilled was by applying wisdom so i want us to pray one more time over this that our children will be promoted based on the works of their hands we're also going to pray that a child can behave himself wisely, a lady, a girl can behave, can comport herself well, and she may go, it may go unnoticed. I want us to pray that the good deeds of my children must be noticed, not just noticed, but it, they must be rewarded in the name of Jesus. Can we begin to pray? Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father. They will be noticed and rewarded. Noticed and rewarded. Noticed and rewarded. They will not labor in vain. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They will not labor in vain. Ibuku Olua. Ifeo Lua. Ano Lua. Daniel. You not labor in vain. Your good deeds shall be noticed. It shall be recorded and shall be rewarded in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name have we prayed. I want you to stretch your hands towards the bedroom of your children. Or if they are next to you, just lay your hands on them and say, In the name of Jesus, your good deeds shall be noticed, shall be recorded, and shall be rewarded in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's go on. In, the, in that same chapter, let's look at 14 and 15. In the same chapter, in, 14, in that chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 18, let's look at... Let's start from verse 12. Verse 12. Sorry, verse 11 for us to understand it better. Let's start from verse 11. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 11. Now, David was behaving himself wisely and he was promoted and he found favor with the people. But later on, we see how David was ministering to Saul, like I mentioned earlier on, and Saul was just angry and wanted to get him killed. He says, and, call, and Saul cast a javelin. For he said, I will smite David, even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. Now you're doing somebody a favor. You have the best of intentions. And all this person wants to do is to get you killed or get you into trouble or put you in a difficult situation. What are you likely to do? The first thing, the first, I believe that the, the person will be tempted to want to retaliate. Or if you don't want to retaliate, to confront the person or to run away from the person. But guess what David did? Let's go on. When he avoided it twice, another version says he ducked, he dodged. He saw not once, twice but he still continued to minister to Saul. So what happened? And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him. He behaved himself wisely. There's a time to fight, and there's a time to flee, and there's a time to freeze. I pray that we'll, God will give us the grace, our children, and they'll know what to do. When to flee, when to fight, when to freeze, when to let go, and went to let God. So David let God. He didn't flee. He didn't fight. Neither did he freeze. Or as if he had frozen, the javelin would have gone through him. He ducked and he dived. And the Bible says because of what he did, King, David, King Saul was afraid of him. Why? Because God was with him. Can we begin to pray today that God, the presence of God, will be with our children. They will know what to do. There was a time for David to fight Goliath. He ran towards Goliath. He fled towards him to fight him. But when he came to Saul, God didn't say flee towards him. God said dive. God said dodge. God said hide. And Saul was afraid of David. Can you begin to pray this morning? Father, I pray for my children that you know when to hide yourself. You know when to flee. You know when to fight. You know when and they will know that God is with you. Your enemies will know that God is with you. Your enemies will know that God is with you. Those who want to bring you down, your antagonists will know that God is with you. Those who want to destroy you, I pray today that they will know that the hand of the Lord is upon you. It will be evidential the evidence will be so apparent by the grace of God. They'll be afraid of you. They'll be afraid of the God you are serving. It's not by power. It is not by might. It's by the power of God, by the Spirit of God, by the mercies of God, by the grace of God. I pray wisdom. This is what wisdom can do. When you apply yourself unto wisdom, you will cause people to be afraid of you. When you apply yourself unto wisdom, you will, you will attract the presence of God. When you apply yourself to wisdom, people will know that God is with you. In the name of Jesus, I pray, my children shall prevail in wisdom. Wisdom shall prevail over your lives. And God shall be with you. You will walk with you. God will walk with you. God will fight for you. God will help you. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Guess what happened? 13. It says, therefore, Saul removed him from Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. 
it was a kind of demotion to demoralize David. But what, what did David do? He didn't go to one corner and sulk. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, initially, the Bible says he behaved himself wisely. But by the time we get to verse 15, that wisely, it's something has happened to it because David was even more careful, more wise, more deliberate, and Saul had no choice but to be more afraid of him. He says, wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. You know what? When people hate you, that is when God will cause his own people, God will cause his love to be strong upon you. We are told about Leah that because Jacob hated Leah, God loved her and gave her children. Because King Saul hated um, David, he wanted, to, you know, he wanted to destroy him. The love of everybody in Israel and Judah was drawn towards David. Can we begin to pray today? That cost my children, and it's good, it's okay. As long as we don't have majority hating our children. If they're in the minority, God will arise and God will fight. So can we begin to pray? That Lord caused my children to be loved by majority of the people. My children will be loved by majority. Whether you like it or not, majority, it is better. And I pray today that our children will behave themselves wisely, even as they navigate their lives in life, in the name of Jesus. As they continue to they continue this journey in life, that they will know how to comport themselves. They will not attract more enemies. Father, I pray today over my children that every enemy of theirs will be afraid of them. Every enemy of my daughter and of my sons will be subdued because of the hand of God upon my children in the name of Jesus. And they shall be loved by those who matter. They shall be loved by those who are relevant. Father, I say thank you. In Jesus' name have we prayed. And finally, let's go to verse 5 in this chapter. We're going to look at other verses. But for this chapter, finally, it says in verse 30, Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass, as they went forth, that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. Can we see the progression from wise to very wise to more wisely? Can we begin to pray for our children? Country school, college, uni, the workplace, the marketplace, ministry, when they get married. We can we begin to pray. Enlarged wisdom, increased wisdom, advanced wisdom, progressive wisdom. In the name of Jesus, wisdom will be accelerated. Wisdom on another level. From one level of wisdom to another level of wisdom. The wisdom that comes from above. Wisdom. Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get it. And all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom is a principal thing. It is the principal thing. Father, we say thank you. Wisdom. Over my children over your children, over our children. We decree wisdom. We embrace wisdom. We seek for wisdom. The wisdom that was upon David, let it rest upon our children. They will be wise. They will be very wise. And they will increase in wisdom in every area of their lives. They will know how to eat. They will know when to eat. They will know when to play. They will know when to pray. They will know when to sleep. They will know when to wake they don't know when to go out. They don't know when to be indoors. They don't know when to study. They don't know when to have fun. They don't know everything in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. I met a little girl some days ago. I was at a conference, and this girl came to me. She was only 13 years old. And she said, oh, Pastor, 
um, auntie. She said, auntie, I want to give you my book. I've just written a book. And she gave it to me. And I was so impressed that a 13-year-old girl has written a beautiful book like this. Uh, I said, thank you. I said, how much is it? She said, no, I just it's for you, auntie. Keep it. I said, no, no, now I want to sew into this. So I, I want to give you something. I said, no, no. And she was going to walk away. And her father said, no, stay and collect the money. Take it. You don't do that. Then I gave her the money and she just knelt down and she said, thank you, auntie. And you know, the way she just carried herself, I said, oh, this lady, God, you help me to help this young girl at 13. So that's what we are talking about, being wise. Her father said, no, you don't do that. And her father didn't tell her to kneel down, but it's her culture. And she knelt, she went on two knees, on her two knees, in a public place and collected the money from me and smiled. And I said, this girl, you are going to go far. And I prayed for her. I pray that concerning our children, they will do the right things at the right time. They will listen to the instructions of daddy, the instructions of mommy, the teachings of daddy, the teachings of mommy, and apply these things and excel in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, why was David able to apply wisdom? He was able to apply wisdom because he feared God. Now, wisdom, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And we know about David, how God boasted about him when Saul messed up. And God told Samuel that I have found a man who is after my own heart. And he was a teenager. He was in his teen years. But he loved God. He feared God. And no wonder God used him mightily. Can we say that of our children? Can we say that our children fear God? Or do they fear us more than they fear God? Do they fear what their friends will say about them than they fear God? Do they have FOMO, fear of missing out, more than they fear God? We are going to pray today that our children will have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Can we open our Bibles, please, to the book of Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. Proverbs 9 and verse 10. And how can you know if your child fears God? It's not something that has to be announced. You will just know. The way they carry themselves, it's time to go to church. You don't have to force them. You don't have to bribe them. They're in church, they bring out their Bibles. They listen to the word of God. In the Sunday school class, they're attentive. They ask relevant questions. And above all, when they're in the, in the midst of their friends, in the world out there, they're able to apply what they have learned at home and at school in the midst of their friends. Their friends are messing about, but they're like Joseph, They'll say, I'm not going to do this great evil before God and before my master. And that's how you know that they fear God. Because Joseph didn't have his parents with him. Neither did he have, the, that, neither did he have his pastor with him. But when sin came, he knew how to handle it. He knew what to do. We are going to pray today that our children will have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Can we look at Proverbs 9.10? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy. Who is the holy? The holy one is God. When you know God and you understand God and you apply the knowledge you have and the understanding you have, that is wisdom. Can we begin to pray? In the name of Jesus, my children will have the knowledge of the holy one. They will have the knowledge of God Almighty. They will have the knowledge of the one who created the heavens and the earth. They will have that understanding that there is a God who is above every other God. That there is a Lord who is above every other Lord. That there is a God who is to be feared. A God who is to be reverenced. A God who is to be exalted. A God who is to be worshipped. A God who is to be adored. A God who is to be praised. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray today. In Jesus' mighty name, our children will fear God. They will know God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That's where it starts. When they fear God. Ibu Kwa you fear God. Anu Oluwa, you fear God. In the name of Jesus. Ibu Kun, Ife, Anu, Daniel. All the days of your life, you will fear God. You will fear God. In Jesus' mighty name, you will fear God. You will not be like the children of Eli. The children of Eli did not fear God. They were doing what they felt they should do. And they were sinning against God. And they were children of the pastor. I pray today, my children will fear God. They will not fear God because of me. They will have that understanding. And they will fear God. 
Father, I pray today, in the name of Jesus, my children shall fear God. Before, because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom from above. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Father, we pray. Every parent represented here, in-house and online, collectively, I bring all our children before God Almighty. Today, because we've just finished the conference, I'm in a very significant place. I am located in a place called the Redemption Camp in United Kingdom. It's a place that we bought late last year. And prior to the Redeemed Christian Church of God buying this property, it was owned by LL Ministries, a Christian organization, a Christian ministry, of course. And on this ground, prayers have gone round. This atmosphere has been saturated by prayers for so many years. When they moved in in 1995, and we took over in year 2023. So, by the grace of God, I and my brethren in this place, we are in an anointed place, the campground. I bring all our children to this anointed atmosphere. I bring all our children into this prayer-based atmosphere. Our Father in the Lord, Pastor E. E. Adeboye, has walked on these grounds. He has just finished a conference with us. He has just made some prophetic declarations. This place is saturated with the power of the Holy Ghost. The presence of God. So I bring all our children spiritually. I bring them into this place. I transport them on the grace, by the grace of God, on the wings of God. I bring them into this atmosphere. And I say, have the spirit of the fear of God in Jesus' mighty name. Begin to name your children, your children born and your children unnamed. Say on this campground, redemption campground, United Kingdom, where the spirits of the fear of the Lord operates, I bring you into this atmosphere. Begin to fear the Lord, for the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Daniel, in the name of Jesus, I bring your spirits. I bring your spirits of the fear of the Lord. Let the prayers that are taking place on this campground, let it be extended to you as well in Jesus' name. You will fear God. You will reverence God. You will please God. You will worship God. You will serve God all the days of your life. The wisdom of God shall dwell within you. When mommy is not around, when daddy is not around, you know how to appraise in wisdom. The wisdom of God, so shall it be. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Amen. So how do we get wisdom? Let's look at the book of Exodus chapter 31. We're going to pray for our children. We need God to touch them where they are. You know, sometimes you can have an idea and not have the wisdom to execute it. You can have a vision, have a concept, and not know how to execute it. There's a particular wisdom that we need to be able to understand what God has revealed to us. For instance, I read a story somewhere about two men who went to a country called India. They went there. And they saw children walking about. They saw adults walking about barefooted. And they said, look at, and one of them said, look at these people. They're so poor. They can't even afford to buy slippers. They can't even afford to buy shoes. They're so poor, so wretched. Look at them. And he condemned them. And his friend looked around and he said, hmm, hmm, they don't have shoes. I'm going to get some. This is a problem that I'm going to solve. So he went back to America or wherever, he, I can't remember his home country. He went back to his home country. And he got slippers, rubber slippers. He got them manufactured, sent them to India, got them bought, and he became a multimillionaire. So he had the, he had, he, he had the knowledge that, oh, these people are poor. He had the understanding 
that there's something I can do about it. And he applied both and got the shoes. And he, got, um, and he sent the slippers to them at a very, very cheap price, at an affordable price. And he was able to break through. That is what I call wisdom. Some people have the knowledge. The other partner had the knowledge. He had the information, but he didn't have the wisdom. So we are going to ask God. Our children think a lot. Our children get inspired. You, you know, you, in this country, in, not just con in this country, everywhere, you can get inspired by anything and almost everything. But when our children conceive these ideas, what do they do with what they have conceived? So many ideas come and they fizzle out and that's it. But today, God is going to fill our children's heart with wisdom and they will know what to do in Jesus' mighty name. It says in Exodus 31, the book of Exodus verse, uh, chapter 31 and verse 1, Exodus 31, verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Now, there are four things here. First of all, Let's look at wisdom, then understanding, knowledge. That's what we all talk about. Then it goes on to say, and in all manner of workmanship, how to execute, how to implement. So can we begin to pray for our children? It says there, to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and brass, and in cutting of stones to set them and in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship look at this was to devise then to cut then to set these are different things to devise then you cut it then after cutting to be able to set it appropriately like a puzzle like a jigsaw puzzle to set it to set what you have cut in its right places. To be able to recollect what you have studied. Our children are in school. They are studying. To know what to study. To know what to focus on. To know the subject. That particular topic. To dig deep into. For God to give our children. The secrets of the examiners. That's what we are praying for. It says and in cutting of stones. To set them in carving of timber. To work in all manner of workmanship. Now look at verse 6. And behold, I have given with him a whole liab, the son of Ahishamash, of the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, have I put wisdom, that they, may make, that they may make all that I have commanded thee. Now, this is what God did. God commanded Moses that this is what I want you to do. But God didn't give him the spirit of wisdom to be able to implement what he had told him to do. God decided to choose Basileo. And after choosing Basil, God said, Moses, you just be the pastor. You just be, be that prayerful person. Just guide him. To walk with Basileo will be Aholiab. So the wisdom to understand Aholiab's role also came from God. So there's so many things I've brought in here. Human resources, and the tools needed, and the Spirit of God. So can we begin to pray that they would know who to partner with? God wanted Basileel to partner with Aholab and not Obadiah. Can you imagine if he didn't have that understanding and he abandoned Aholab? He would just struggle and struggle and struggle, and it would be very difficult for him. So can we begin to pray? Our children will know who to, they'll have the wisdom and understand who to partner with. That God will fill their hearts with wisdom. God, fill my students' hearts with the Spirit of God. Give them wisdom. Give them understanding. Give them knowledge. And give them the power to carry out workmanship. Give them the people to work with. Who are they studying with? Who do they need to do business with? Who do they need, who do they need to be in partner with? Who do they need to speak to? In the name of Jesus understanding, knowledge, wisdom, in the name of Jesus. Make sure you are praying today. Our children, 
God gave unto him a whole life, the son of Ahimachat, of the tribe of Dan, and in the hands of all that are wise-hearted. Those who are wise-hearted, God said, these are the people I want you to work with. By the grace of God, our children will not work with foolish people. They will not work with people who are ignorant. They will not hang around people who are not going anywhere. They will not work with people who lack vision. They will not work with lazy people by the grace of God. Their friends shall be friends who are brilliant, who are intelligent, who are determined, who are intentional, who want to make it in life in the name of Jesus. The ability to separate them from foolish friends. Let God give unto our children in Jesus' name. As a parent, I pray, no friend will distract my children. I pray the likes of our whole lab, the likes of our whole lab shall be their portion in the name of Jesus. The likes of wise-hearted friends will be their portion. They'll be drawn to them by the grace of God. Thank you, Father. We bless you this day. In Jesus' name have we prayed. We are still praying. It says, verse 6, Behold, I have given with him. Who gave him? God. I have given with him Aholab, the son of Ahimas, Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan. Not just Aholab. Who else did God give unto um, Basilel? He gave unto him also all those that are wise-hearted. So some people can have wisdom in their hearts. Some people can have foolishness in their hearts. But God decided to choose those who have wisdom residing in their hearts to work with Bezalel. Bezalel. So I want us to pray today. When our friends, when our children, when they grow up, maybe they want to start business or they want to get married or they want to go into the ministry, that the likes of our whole life, those who are wise-hearted, will be the type of people that our children will partner with in Jesus' mighty name. I want us to uproot troublesome people. I want us to uproot those who are unsuccessful, those who don't matter in life, the riffraff, the vagabonds, those whoever it is that will bring them down. Now, before we carry on, there are some troublesome people who God wants our children to change. You know that. Because there were some people who are vagabonds and troublemakers. They met David, they met David at the cave of Adolam. And David made out of them captains of thousands. So if God is sending a troublesome person into our children's life, let it be that God wants our children to mentor them and change them. But if the purpose is to bring them down, let there be a separation in Jesus' mighty name. Can you begin to pray? Whoever it is that wants to bring my daughter down, whether in the form of a husband, form of a friend, an in-law, let my children not even even ever ever be associated with them let there be a separation today my son in the name of jesus my sons no lady no woman no in-law no friend will dis will distract you will take you out of god's purpose for your life in the name of jesus I pray, let there be a demarcation. Let there be a separation. Let there be a demolition. In the name of Jesus, I scatter today. I scatter. I forbid the type of friends that would, that Jonadab, that gave Ammon an evil counsel. I come against them today. I forbid them a total separation, a complete separation. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen and amen. Now let's begin. them, those that will favor my children, the friends that will help my children, God will touch them because God will put into their hearts wisdom. God will put into their hearts the ability to work together. God will put into their hearts the ability to strategize. God will put into their hearts leadership skills. God will put into their hearts the ability to collaborate, divine collaboration. I receive today. I welcome it today. So shall it be in the lives of my children. They will know who to partner with. They will know who to collaborate with. They will know who to cooperate with. They will know who to chase away. They will not be distracted. They will not be destroyed. They will not be damaged in the name of Jesus. Any form of leakage any form of wreckage, any form of damage that the enemy is planning, let it not come to pass. I refuse, I cancel, I forbid, I reject in the mighty name of Jesus. The likes of a whole life, the likes of wise hearted people, I bring them in. Ibuku receive, if I receive, I no receive, then I receive in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name have we prayed. We are still praying. 
let's look at the word of God. Let's travel down to the book of Esther. Esther chapter 2 verse 15. Now for wisdom, nobody has it all. It's only God that he's the, he's the custodian of wisdom. And he gives wisdom. We'll find out later. He gives us wisdom when we ask of him. He gives it to us. Sometimes God can also use human beings to give us wisdom. Now in the book of Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. We're going to pray. It says there. Are we there? Esther 2.15. And when the turn of Esther came, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go into the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked upon her. Praise the Lord. Can you put your children's name here? It says, like this bit. Repeat after me. And Ibuku Ife Anu Daniel obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon them. Hallelujah. Now, why did Esther obtain favor? Because she was obedient. Hagar gave her wisdom, and she did not disdain her wisdom. She accepted the wisdom, and she received favor. I want us to pray for our children, that in the name of Jesus, they will have a heart of understanding. They will understand when good counsel is being given, and when godly counsel is being given. Can we begin to pray today? Over my children, when godly counsel is being given, godly counsel will always be good, but good counsel may not necessarily be godly. Are we praying today? My children, they will have that heart of understanding and the ability to obey, the ability to stand on godly counsel in Jesus' mighty name. The hey guys of life will meet my children. The hey guys of life. There are hey guys, there are people out there who want to give counsel with no ulterior motive. They just want to bless because God has ordained them. Father, we say thank you. In Exodus, it was God that gave it to Basilel. But in Esther, God raised Haggai to give it to Esther. Begin to pray today. God, raise Haggai of this world and bless my children. And let my children have that understanding to listen, to understand, and to fully comply so that they can obtain mercy and favor before all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we take this song that says, I can see the wisdom of the Lord descending in this place over my children. I can see the wisdom of the Lord descending in this place to bless all my children. I can see the wisdom of the Lord descending in this place to bless all my children. I can see. Can you see it? I can if you see can see it, sing it with confidence. The wisdom of the yes, Lord. The wisdom of God. Descending in this place to bless me one more time. I can see. I can see. The wisdom of the Lord descending in this place to bless all my children. One more time, like you mean it. I can see the wisdom of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Descending in this place to bless all my children. I can see. I can see. The wisdom of the Lord Amen. descending in this place Hallelujah. to bless all my children. Amen. Can we go to the book of Exodus, please? Exodus chapter 18. We're going to pray. Sometimes wisdom can also come from a family member. It can come from a family member. Yes, it can come from God. And it can also come from, in the case of Esther, it came from a stranger. Somebody who was not related to her, somebody who was not connected to her, Haggai. In Exodus, we saw how it came from God. 
Esther, Haggai, here, it can come from a family member. In the book of Exodus, um, chapter 18, are we there? Chapter 18, and it's from a man called Jethro. Jethro was the father-in-law of Moses. Moses was a man of God. And I want us to pay attention to this. Moses was a man of God. He was a great deliverer. God used him. God called him. But he lacked wisdom in a particular area. Nobody knows it all. And we need to be quick to admit that we don't know it all. So, and when those who know it, when they come to us, we must be able to discern that this is godly counsel and fully comply so that we can go to the next level. Now, let's look at the book of Exodus chapter 18, 17 to 23. 17 to 23. Now, Moses was also a leader, but his leadership skills was lacking. There was something he was doing to himself, and it, was, it could have damaged his health. But thank God, help came. 17. And Moses' father-in-law said to him, The thing that you are doing is not good. What was he doing? He was carrying out judgment on the people. He would sit down in the morning. You can start from verse 13. He would sit down in the morning until evening time. And he would listen to people's problems and he would give advice. He would listen to them and he would resolve conflicts. And he would do it from morning till evening. And his father-in-law observed him. And when I was studying this, I said, why didn't the Spirit of God tell him? The, Spirit, the Holy Spirit could have said, no, what you're doing is not right. No, we might not delegate some of this task. But no, sometimes God will purposely allow us to go through some things so that somebody can come into our lives. And I pray that our children will find people that will guide them and give them godly counsel in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He said, now, for verse 18, that will surely wear away both you and these people that is with you. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken to my voice. I will give thee counsel. And God will be with thee. I love that. He said, I will give you counsel. And God, he had to slot in the God factor. When a counsel is godly, it will definitely be good. But it can be good without having God in it. So I want us to pray today that the type of counsel that comes from godly people like Jethro, let it rest upon our children in Jesus' name. He said to him, listen to my voice, but he put God in. Sometimes people say, listen to me, and they exclude God. But he is saying, I'm telling you this, but God will also be with you. He said, for thou, be thou for the people to God word, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And he said to them, this is what you should do. Break them down into groups of 50s, you know, verse 25. And Moses chose able men out of Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard cases they brought to Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. A leader who wants to do everything himself or everything herself will die suddenly or will just get into trouble. And that was what Moses was told, and he broke it down, the art of delegation. I want us to pray that God will send a Jethro into the lives of our children. Sometimes as mommies and daddies, we are telling them these things. They won't answer. They won't respond. It, it, sometimes it will have to take a stranger to tell them something we've been telling them at home for them to comply. So can we begin to release a Jethro? I release a Jethro over the life of my daughter right now. Ibukun, wherever you are, Ife, Anu, Daniel, a Jethro, a mother-in-law, a brother-in-law, a sister-in-law, a neighbor somewhere, by the grace of God, they will take an interest in what you're doing and they will guide you. They will give you godly counsel. You will listen to the voice of Jethro you will listen to the voice that is behind the voice of Jethro, which is the voice of God. You will not struggle. You will not argue. You will comply in the name of Jesus. The power of the Lord will rest upon you. The power of God will give you the ability to be obedient. The power of God will help you. The power of God will sustain you. The wisdom of God 
will rest upon you. The wisdom that comes from above. The wisdom that is not sensual. The wisdom that is godly. The wisdom that is gentle. The wisdom that is easy to be entreated with. Let the wisdom of God rest upon you. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Amen. We are still praying. Our time is far gone. That's why we just can't finish wisdom today. We're going to continue next month. But let's take a few, a few more prayer points. Let's go to the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 1. How our children can also acquire wisdom. 1 Kings chapter 3. Sorry. 1 Kings chapter 3. Let's see how our children can also obtain wisdom. Thank God for what God can decide to do. And thank God for the role he's going to play by sending people into the lives of our children. But let's look at something else that God can also do. In the book of 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 3, are we there? And verse 3. It says, And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and burned incense in high places. The first one I want us to take is the fact that Solomon loved God. When God can testify and say, Mudukwe loves me, Ibuku loves me, that's on another level. Because most times we are always declaring our love for God. I love you, Lord. God, I love you. I love you. But when God is saying, Ah, Tomi Odumeru, I, lo I know you love me. That is another testimony. I want us to pray today that in the name of Jesus, up there in heaven, God will boast of our children that they love him. God will say, Ibuku, Afolabi, I know you love me. Ibuku loves me. Ife loves me. Anu loves me. Daniel loves me. Let it be said up there in heaven. The same way God said it about Solomon. God said, Solomon, and Solomon loved the Lord. It was testified. God knew that Solomon loved him. He knew. Let the love that our children have for God, let it be number one. Let my children love God more than they love me. Can you take that prayer? Let my children love God more than they love me, their mother. Let my children love God more than their father. Let my children love God more than their spouses. Let my children love God more than their careers. Let my children love God more than their hobbies, their trainers, more than social media. In the name of Jesus, let their love for God be above anything else here on earth. Oh, I pray today, Ibuku, you will love God more than me. You will love God more than daddy. You will love God more than your husband. My sons shall love God more than their wives. You will love God more than anything on earth. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Let's look at verse 4. The next thing, apart from loving God, he gave unto God a thousand burnt offerings. Some children in church, they'll come to me, they'll say, Pastor, thank God for good home training. They'll say, I want to give my first fruit to the church. I just started working at B&Q, and this is my first salary. I'm giving everything to the church. And it is biblical. For those watching online and you think it's child abuse, you just don't have an understanding of scriptures. If you want to have a better understanding, you can DM me or you can contact me. I will go through scriptures. Our first fruit is to be given to God. A child as young as 12 years old, she came. No, not 12. I think she was a teenager. She gave me the envelope. She said, Pastor, pray. It's for the church. 220 pounds. She gave it to the church. Everything she received that month, she gave it to the church. Because she understands that in the house of God, there must be meat. In the house of God, when you give unto God, he'll give back unto you. Good measure, and shaking together, running over, shall men give unto you. She had an understanding that when you put your seed in the soil and a germinate, you are bound to reap a bountiful harvest. This girl knew that it is not every seed that you must eat. That some seeds that must enter into the ground and grow so that you can have a harvest. I said to her, you go far. Can we begin to pray today? Solomon gave unto the Lord. Nobody had ever done it before. A thousand burnt offering.
can we begin to pray? Our children will know how to give. They'll know how to give to the poor. They'll know how to give to the work of God. They'll know how to give to charities. They'll know how to give to mommy and daddy. When it is Father's Day, they'll know how to give. When it is Mother's Day, they'll know how to release their seed. They'll know how to bless their siblings. They'll know how to buy birthday presents. They'll know how to share. They'll know how to part with their money. With what they have earned, they'll know how to part from it. They'll know how to give it away. By the grace of God, they will be givers. They will be generous. They will not be stingy people. They will not be tight-fisted. Their hands will be open. And the hands of the giver is always on top. Begin to pray today. Right from a tender age, our children will know how to give. They will know how to share their toys. They will know how to be generous. They will know how to have mercy on the poor. They will know how to share things with their friends in school. They will be givers. They will give unto God. They will give unto the work of God. They will give to the, to the ministry, mission field. So shall it be. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. I remember a long time ago, I went with my daughter to a conference, and the man raised an offering, and everything in her piggy bank, she was still very young, she said, everything in my piggy bank, I'm going to empty it and bring it the following day. And that was exactly what she did. She emptied her piggy bank and gave all the coins. I said, God, you, you are going to go far. Our children will know how to give unto the house of the Lord in Jesus' name. They'll know how to give unto God. Amen. Amen. They'll know how to give and say, God, because God, God can't eat money. He will not spend money. But he needs his money spent to do his work on earth. So what else did Solomon do? First of all, he loved God. Secondly, he knew how to give unto the Lord. After he did that, he prompted something. I pray that our children will prompt a divine response in Jesus' name. In Gibeon, verse 5, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou, in his dream, in his dream he was praying. We are going to pray. There's wisdom in what Solomon did. He loved God. It was a lifestyle. He just loved. He was sold out for God. Secondly, he was given to God. He was ready to spend and to be spent. And in his dream, he was praying. Some children, in their dreams, they find themselves eating chocolate. They see themselves doing silly things. But Solomon, in his own dream, he was praying. <laughs> when I read this, I said, God, I want to continue to pray my dreams. I've prayed so many times in my dreams, but it, it, I, want, I want more of it. Look at his prayer. He said, Thou hast showed unto thy servants, David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne. As it is. The first thing he did in his dream was to bless God. He was just telling God about what he has done, praising God, acknowledging what God has done in his dream. God said, tell me what you want me to do. But it's asking, he was just praising God. I'm going to end here because we can't finish. So three things I want to end on. First of all, he loved God. Secondly, he gave unto the Lord. Thirdly, in his dream, he was praising God. Can we begin to pray? This is the part of the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Can we pray for our children that when they go to bed, they'll find themselves dreaming and they'll find themselves praising God. God will give them an open check. God will say to them, what do you want from me? God will reveal his will to them. Our children shall not be unwise. They will understand what the will of God is. When they go to bed, they will have heavenly dreams. They will have spiritual dreams. Now and forevermore, in Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Father, we say thank you. As we pause today, let there be a physical manifestation of what we have prayed about. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name have we prayed. Amen. Can I hand over to the Kimbimbo Fatukasi? Can we make him feel welcome, please? Put your hands together. Thank you. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. Everlasting Father, eternal rock of ages, we exalt your name. We give you all glory, honor, and adoration. We thank you for what you've done today. 
Our mother has been a blessing to us as usual. I want us to begin to pray for her as well. The Bible says in the book of the Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6, the Bible says the hard-working farmer, the husbandman, that labors must be first partaker of the fruits. We want to pray today that she will be the first partaker of these blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Let us lift her up in prayer and her family as well and begin to pray. Everlasting Father, Jehovah God, we thank you. We commit your daughter into your hand and her household. We pray today that she will be, they will be the first partaker of these blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray for strength concerning her today. We pray that you continue to strengthen her. We pray that Jehovah God, our strength will not fail. Eternal Rock of Ages, we pray that even in the places of prayer, Jehovah God, you will continue to encourage her in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray that you perfect all that concerns her in Jesus' mighty name. We declare to, and decree today that our going out is blessed and our coming in is blessed in Jesus' mighty name. We pray even that the ground that she walks upon, Jehovah God, they are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. I want us to lift our children into the hands of the Lord as well. The Bible says, walk with the wise and become wise. We pray that concerning our children, they will be found in the company of wise people in Jesus' mighty name. They will be surrounded with people full of wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that the Jethro's of this world, that God will bring them into their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you praise and glory. Thank you, mighty Father. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Father, we just want to thank you. Wisdom is the principal thing. It is the principal thing. We live in a world where people are just, everybody, are, people are just saying things anyhow. Anyhow. Some people, they brought causes upon their lives by the things they've done and the things they have said. We pray this will not be the portion of our children in Jesus' mighty name. So we can't overemphasize the importance of wisdom. Next month, by the special grace of God, we shall be meeting again on the 19th of May, same time, same venue, and the theme still remains the same. It is going to be the part two of what we've done today. The principal thing, wisdom, part two. 19th of May, please, let's put it in our diary. And also, let us... Um, begin to share the news about the prayer meeting that takes place in this church every third Sunday of the month. It is specifically for the lives of our seeds, the ones that have been born and the ones that are on their way. And we pray today that God will continue to preserve their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have we been blessed? Have we been blessed? The Bible says it's time for us to give our offering. The Bible says, give and it shall be given back to us. And we know that, just as our mother in the Lord has said earlier, that the hand that gives is always on top. The hands that give is always on top. So I want to encourage us to please, let's give our seed, our offering today. The account details is on the screen. The account details is on the screen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Our Father, our God, we give you praise and glory. The mighty man in battle, we exalt your name. We thank you for what you've done today. We return all the praise and glory to you. Father, let your name be exalted. In the lives of our children, let your name be exalted. In this ministry, Jehovah God, we pray that your name shall continue to be exalted in Jesus' mighty name. Everlasting Father, the prayers that has been raised today, Jehovah God, we soak them with the blood of the Lamb. We pray today, Jehovah God, you wash over every word, every prayer point that your daughter has raised in Jesus' mighty name. They shall not fall to the ground in Jesus' mighty name. We pray there shall be a speedy performance over this prayer point in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that concerning our children, beginning from this day, they shall begin to operate in wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. They shall begin to walk in wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, mighty Father. We commit the rest of the day into your hand. We commit the service that starts at 11 today into your hand. We pray, Jehovah God, you have your way in our midst. Let your glory com come down. Let your glory come down. Do what only you can do. Thank you, mighty Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we share the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever and ever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.